Hi, this is a DK64 custom music tutorial. In this, you will learn how to convert music from other games into the DK64 sound font, and you can even create your own custom music if you'd like. Um, so you'll need a few tools for this. I will put links to most of this in the video description. Uh, the first one you need is the N64 sound tool. That's going to be to load the sound bank and export it so you can use it. Uh, you will need the N64 MIDI tool, that's going to be to load and save MIDI files in and out of ROMs. You will need Virtual MIDI Synth, that's going to be to load the DK64 sound font and use it in your MIDI editor. And you'll need a MIDI editor. Uh, the one I'm using is Notation Composer, that's an old one, I've had it for like 16 years. Uh, you can use anything, there are some free ones, this is the one I will be using. It's useful because I can see the sheet music and that's really, really great to edit MIDI with. Um, but yeah, you can use anything. That's just the one I will be using. Finally, you obviously need a DK64 ROM and if you want to export music from any other game, you will need that game as well. Uh, so the first step is to get the sound bank. The sound bank is acquired with the sound tool. Uh, this step, you will only need to do that once. Once you've done it, you no longer need to do this. So the first thing you want to do is click on file and open a known game and now you're going to have a big list of games so you can find DK64 in there is right here and then load the ROM itself. Now you will see two sound banks. You've got zero and one. One is going to be all the sound effects like this one or right. So you've got like a thousand sound effects in there. That's not going to be helpful for MIDI. Uh, so you want to use this one. This one has 95, 94 instruments. So this is the one you want to be using. It has 95 instruments here. So uh, make sure you have 00, zero loaded here and then you can rip the sound bank and save it anywhere. This part I've already done so I'm not going to do that. But uh, yeah, once you've saved it, you're done with this tool and you no longer need it for MIDI purposes. Uh, next, you want to open Virtual MIDI Synth, that is uh, to load the sound bank. Now you can see it's already loaded, so I'm not going to complete that step, but I can show you how it's done. So you click on the Add New Sound Fonts Plus, and just navigate to where your sound font is, and DK64 Sound Font. This is the file you just saved with the sound, font, uh, the sound editor, the sound list tool. So you want to load that one, open, I'm not going to do that part because it's already done, and then it's going to show up here. And that's when uh, you know you've loaded the sound font into your virtual MIDI synthesizer, basically. Um, so once that is done, you also no longer need to do this. Uh, this also tends to like uh, s uh, start on startup, so you might want to change that if you don't want that to happen. Um, so once you're done, you can close these settings and now you're ready to um, edit MIDI files using the DK64 sound font. That's super helpful because as you're editing the file, you can hear like basically what it's going to sound like in the game. Um, but you need MIDI files to edit, right? So you want to open the MIDI tool and now you're going to load the game that you want to take MIDIs from. Uh, let's do Diddy Kong Racing. So make sure to select the right version. The one I have is US 1.0, and then you can load this. It's going to take a little bit, but once this appears, that's when, yeah, that's when it's loaded. So now you've got a bunch of songs. That's all the soundtrack in the game. And what you want to do, you could do a single song if you want, but I just like to export all of them, and then I have, I have them. I, don't, I no longer need to do this step. So you export all to MIDI. And then you select your folder. Once again, I've had, I've done this step before, so I'm not going to select the folder. But once that is done, you will have your all of your songs in a folder that you can open using your MIDI uh, editor. So now I have all the MIDI files here. And let's say I want to open uh, this one. That is Boss Challenge. Um, so this is the Boss Challenge MIDI. Now. The thing is, uh, by by default, it's going to be using general MIDI, but uh, Diddy Kong Racing has its own sound font, and it has, let's say, 80 instruments. It uses, you know, they all use different numbers. They're all going to be assigned to whatever number it is in the sound font. But the thing is, it's going to be completely different to 
general MIDI and it's also completely different to the DK64 sound font. So when I play this in general MIDI, it's gonna sound like complete trash. Uh, this is normal. That's just because the sound fonts are different. So uh, what you want to do first, now this step might change for different MIDI editors, but the way it works in this one is I have to go to staff setup and then device here. That's the like basically what is playing the sounds. Now this is the default MIDI one. But if I click here, I can assign my virtual MIDI synth to every instrument in this. So now it's going to instead play everything in the DK64 sound font. And not surprisingly, it sounds even worse. Now this is because all the instruments that have like a number that is, you know, a trumpet or something in the uh, Diddy Kong Racing now becomes like monkey noises in DK64. So it sounds like it doesn't sound like anything, right? So this is the long step. This is the part that's going to take a lot of work. You have to figure out which each one of these instruments, like what it can relate to in the DK64 sound font. Now the sound font uh, is not going to be labeled, right? So if I want to change the instrument here, this is the general MIDI sound bank, you know, like piano, and then you've got harpsichord, clavinet, glockenspiel, you know, marimba, drawboard organ, but you know, this one, this organ here is actually the trombone in the DK64 sound font. And rock organ is the strings in the sound font. This one is the trumpet. This one is the muted trumpet. This is another muted trumpet, like the one in, used in Japes. So, you know, you can't really uh, know which one is which until you've heard them. Like I know maybe 20 of them by memory, 30 or so. And then everything else, I just kind of have to uh, try them out and figure out which one sounds okay and which one is not suitable. So yeah, this step is the time consuming one and uh, it's definitely going to be tricky, especially for uh, percussion. Percussion is extremely tricky uh, because it's fairly limited in DK64. You have a lot of like drums, timpani, you know, big like drums and stuff but you don't really have a lot of you know a, like a regular drum kit it doesn't have like a lot of sounds to it so this could be a this could be tricky depending on the soundtrack you're trying to convert uh it's been a challenge for me in D diddy Kong racing i can tell you that um so yeah this is a challenging part but once it's done you can have a mini file that sounds decent this is the converted one after I changed all the instruments, you can see here, oops, uh, you can see here, this is the original. You can see core, uh, choir, I mean, uh, taiko drum, vibraphone, you know, different instruments. And when I go here, now it's accordion, glockenspiel. So I had to change all the instruments, but now in the DQ64 sound font, it sounds like this. <laughs> So as you can see, it's a little better. Um, now I have to warn you, the glockenspiel instrument, that's number 10. This is for, you know, your regular percussion with like drums and cymbals. It sounds like this one. All right. Uh, this one is really difficult to edit because all the notes are going to be like various percussion. So when you're editing, like it's going to be different here than it is in DK64. So you have to like figure out each pitch, like each note height basically uh, sounds like which part of the drum kit. So you have to like change every one of these notes that have the same pitch to another pitch so it sounds like another and sometimes it's even a sound that could be found in another instrument that's reserved for something else so 
this is like the percussion is a really time consuming part and but it's worth it to take the time to make it sound great um but yeah this part is like actually really long to do uh what's w once you've done it you have this midi file uh, another thing is uh, i have to warn you that sometimes the instruments are not going to sound great they're going to sound off pitch uh, that's a problem with the sound bank i haven't tried to fix that because i don't really know how but basically there are some instruments that when they were exported to the sound bank the pitch wasn't exactly right so it's off by like a semitone sometimes or a little bit so it can sound really grating to the ears when everything is off pitch and sounds together but don't change that because once you go into the actual game the pitch is going to be fine it's just when you edit it it's not going to sound great i don't think i have any examples in this one but maybe later in the Oh, you can hear the piano. The piano is off key. So if you listen closely, you can hear that the piano is just a little bit off. I think it's a little higher. So this is a mild example, but some of them are really, really off key and it's, it's pretty difficult to listen to sometimes. But then once you go in the actual game, it's going to sound fine. Uh, so once you're done with this step, actually, you know, I have more warnings. Um, there are some instruments, especially the low ones. Um, let me just, right, let me just use this one as an example. Low instruments like this one, or the trombone, for example. Sometimes when, like, you know, you're high up in pitch, it can sound pretty good to use this instrument. You know, you can use that if you want, or you could maybe use this one. You know, it sounds pretty good, right? But the problem is, these instruments have a minimum and maximum range, and especially the low ones like the two I just showed you. Uh, these ones have a maximum note that is fairly low, so you can't just go high up in the treble clef and you like use all these high notes and then assign them it's going to sound fine here like it sounds perfectly fine right but then once you go in the game and you you actually import the midi it's going to default to the maximum note that's assigned to it so anything above that will just be lowered down to the maximum note so it's just going to sound like the the highest note over and over instead of you know what it actually sounds like so sometimes when you go in the game and you'll hear something is way off, like an instrument is not playing the notes it should be, it's just playing the same note over and over. That's because you went outside the range of the actual instrument and you just have to change for another instrument. That can be a pain when you think that you found the perfect instrument and then you find out it just doesn't reach that high. Uh, that can be annoying. But yeah, you just have to you know, tr test it out and figure out what works and what doesn't. Uh, another thing is uh, the number of channels. You can only have 16 channels in total. I think I'm using all of them here. I'm using 15. It goes to 16, but that's just a quirk of my uh, MIDI editor. Uh, my MIDI editor automatically assigns channel 10 to, like, drums, and that's kind of annoying when you... Anyway, I'm using only 15 channels. I think for DK64, 16 might work sometimes, but you want to generally keep it at 15 or lower. Because I think it generally assigns channel 1 to something else. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but uh, basically 15 channels or lower is safe. 16 might be too many. 17 is definitely too many. It's going to cut anything above 16. Um, so yeah, keep it to 15 channels or lower. If you need more instruments than 15, you can use sound, uh, like instrument changes. I like this one here, uh, in this editor, that's the symbol for, a, a instrument change. So it starts with something and then it changes to something else. So I, that's how I can bypass the 16 instrument limit. Um, and then, right, basically this step is going to be explained in more detail later but roughly like 
you want to want to keep the you want to keep the total file size somewhat small because DK64 you know it's fairly limited in how big MIDI files it can take. I'm pretty sure this one is probably close to the limit so you can have an idea of like how large the maximum file can be. And uh, I found that the one thing that um, really makes the um, really makes the file size explode is gradual changes in pitch and volume. So this is my volume graph. You can see everything is pretty constant volume with some, like sometimes one change here. If you'd like to do like, you know, a crescendo or a decrescendo or, you know, like a fade in, fade out, and you want to, you know, use something like this that would um, volume, right? Yeah, this way. If you want to like, do something like this, that's like a slow fade out or something. That is like a volume change all the time, right? That is gonna eat up a lot of data. That's gonna make your file size a lot larger than it needs to be, so avoid that. And the same goes for pitch bend. Uh, that's actually the one that's gonna be used the most. Um, if like, you, you know, you've got these trombone or trumpet parts that do like all of these pitch shifts like that all of those are changes that are that, that are going to eat up data every time so if you have stuff like this and your file is too big you might want to have to you know get rid of it and it's gonna it's gonna sound different of course but that could like make a huge difference in file size uh, I basically that that's more like a last resort for me because it obviously changes how stuff sounds like this one for instance so you know if I remove the pitch band it's gonna sound completely different so you don't want to do that Obviously, it sounds much worse. So you don't want to do that if you can, but if you're forced to, like this makes a huge difference in file size. Um, that's basically it. Once you've done all of this step, like that's the longest part, of course. It's going to take you like an hour and a half at least. Um, you Maybe not an hour and a half, maybe at least 40 minutes for simpler ones and up to like an hour 15, an hour 20, if you want to do like complex percussion as well. Uh, once you're done, you can save it as a MIDI file. So this is just how I do it here. No, it's actually export in this one, export MIDI file, and then, you know, save it as whatever you want. And now you're going to be ready to import it in your DK64. So now you want to open N64 MIDI tool. And now you want to load uh, DK64 instead. Load the ROM. Uh, I'm going to load this. I'm going to load this one because that's the one I added the music in. Right for this step, um, there's a thing I don't really know it that well, but it's called CRC. It's basically I think it's like a copyright protection. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, basically, it's a check that makes sure the ROM is exactly what it should be. It's like a, a sum, uh, what is it again, a, a checksum, roughly. I don't know this part that well, but basically, if you change, if you make changes to the ROM and you just save it as, as is, it's just not going to load. It's going to show you the expansion pack error message, and it's not going to work. But... Um, there's a way to get around it using a tool, but what I use is, is simply a DK64 randomizer ROM. So just generate a ROM using the randomizer, and then that's gonna, like the CRC check is gonna be disabled, and you can just use that and make any other change with the music or with anything. Uh, and you don't need to go through the step of making that work. That's what, I, that's what I've done, and that's why I'm using a custom ROM for this. Um, now, once you've loaded the ROM, you can see all the music in DK64. Um, if you want to know which song is which, there's an asset ROM map with the music. That is the ROM address of every uh, music in the game. Uh, this is available in uh, the Discord server. In um, 
training grounds over here. It should be a pinned message as well, probably. But in general information, asset map, this is the spreadsheet I am showing you right now. So this is if you need to figure out which song is which. Uh, honestly, Jungle Jape starting area is the first one. It's pretty easy to get to, and that's the one I'm using for testing purposes. But if you ever need to have like the biggest file size you need, uh, that is 137C over here, intro story medley. So 137C24. It's here. Uh, so that's the location and that's the file size. You can see 2DDE, that's the largest file. So if you are if you try to import a file, like let's say you try to import your MIDI here, uh, boss challenge. If you have the cannot import message, here is the compressed file size of your MIDI. Like this is how large it's going to be in the game. So I, I purposely chose like the smallest file I could see. So it's obviously bigger than the tiny file, but F42 is the size of my file here. So anything that is smaller than F42 is not going to accept the change because the file I'm trying to import is larger than the file I'm trying to replace. Uh, I know there's uh, there's a method that other peoples have done to uh, to um, to get rid of that part. Like you can import any file into any location and that works. Uh, but it's not using the MIDI tool. The MIDI tool doesn't allow you to do that. Uh, it's some more advanced method that I'm I'm not capable of using. Um, but yeah, the JAPE starting area is fairly large. It's not, it's not the biggest, so you might have to use something else sometimes. But it's usually good for testing purposes. So that's when I that's the one I usually use. Um, <clears throat> so what you want to do here is you want to import your MIDI. But before you do that. There's a looping section. If your file, if your MIDI loops, which it usually does, you want to check that box. And then there's a number next to it. This number is the number of units of time that it, the loop has to be offset by. So if your music has an intro or if the loop is like slightly different, so it has to like have a few measures before it actually loops, um, this is not going to be zero. Um, basically, one beat is th 360 units. If you look at the bottom here, when I move my cursor, 120, 240, 360, those are like quarters, like 16th notes, right? And then, no, sorry, it's 480, not 360. 480 units per, per beat. So 0, 120, 240, 360, 480, 0. So it, it has 480. So one full 4x4 four four meter or bar is 1920, 1920 units. Um, usually it's going to be a full 4x4 four four bar, but if it's something else, then you have to basically count the beats uh, of the offset. Um, in this one, I think, well, I, I basically... This is something I, I started doing recently, is when I save my MIDI files, after like the name, I put the number here, because that's going to tell me like what the number I need to put here to make it loop correctly. So uh, 768 means that's four bars. So the actual loop is going to loop back to measure five here. So after the music loops, it's going to go back to this point. Wait, why is it not playing? Oh. It's going to go back to this point. So when I'm at the end here, and then it's going to go back to that point. So this is telling me it's going to, uh, the offset needs to be four full bars. So when I import the music here, 768.0, and then uh, import the MIDI, and then you select your custom boss challenge 768 and now the midi is imported even if it fits it doesn't mean it's actually going to work what you need to do next is export the binary file so the dot bin and then you can put it wherever like boss challenge okay now if you go to the uh, folder here you'll see the dot bin file now, what you want to have, to, when you, what you want to do here is check the properties and look at the exact file size, sixteen thousand three hundred thirty-six. So the maximum. This is the 
Um, this is the MIDI file co uh, converted to N64 format and uncompressed. The uncompressed version is what is going to be loaded in actual RAM when the music is loaded and plays. So the file size you see here, 15E6, or it actually was like F something, um, like 0F whatever, that is the compressed file size. And so you want to make sure it's smaller than the music you're replacing. But the uncompressed file size can be much larger. And um, so if it's too big, the game will crash when it tries to load because of the, the MIDI data will overwrite some stuff that's later. Basically, this, the space that's allocated for loading MIDI files is 16,512 bytes. So this is like not even 200 bytes away from being too large, even though the compressed size was pretty small. So this part, you actually have to be very careful. And that's when I said, you know, pitch bends and volume changes, um, instrument changes are not too bad. Uh, but yeah, basically, you know, lots of notes, lots of uh, instrument and volume, uh, lots of pitch and volume changes can drive the size up really high, really quickly. Um, so again, if this is too large, you have to cut down on something. You have to do anything that you can to make the file smaller and still sound good. Um, so yeah, uh, 16,512 16, is the maximum. Uh, you want to make sure to keep that under it. So this is good. We're under it. So now at this point, uh, by clicking import, the music is already replaced, but the ROM is just not saved yet. So you want to click on the right ROM and overwrite your uh, you obviously you don't want to you know re use a vanilla ROM right but this is one I've already been using for testing all the music so I overwrite it and now you're ready to test it uh, you can test it on EverDrive it's going to work the same but it's much easier to run tests using uh, BizHawk so I have BizHawk here I can open here and I have a safe state here that is just I, I actually have a better one this one is just before loading Jeep, so I just load that save state and it's gonna automatically play the music basically. There you go. And now you've got the music in the game. Uh, this part is where you will find if there's any instruments that were outside the range and they're gonna sound like garbage. Uh, I'm gonna let it play a little bit so you can hear the piano that was off-key earlier is no longer off-key now. There you go. And that is basically how you do it. Um, I said you can also make your own custom music, right? So basically, if you have your MIDI editor, you can just create your, your own custom music with it. Uh, just make sure all the instruments are loaded in the DK64 sound font and you can, you know, you can use it. I made a GoldenEye Bunker DK64 Lobby. Uh, that was, I, I copied some stuff from the Bunker 2 song, but like basically it was made from scratch. So yeah, if you want, you can, you know, just add notes. Uh, and it's gonna, you know, it's gonna sound in the DK64 sound font. Um, and then you can do the same steps, import it. Uh, hold on, I, uh, no, I don't need to check this. Uh, custom lobby lobby is zero so change the loop number to zero import lobby uh, I've already done the part of exporting the binary file but just for the sake of it we can check it here properties 11,000 that's well under 16,000 so we're good uh, now write the ROM here, save, now go back here, 
reload the ROM, save state, now we got this song. So there you have it. This is how you um, this is how you convert music into the DK64 sound font, or you can make your your own custom music if you want. Um, if you have any questions, I'll I'm usually available to answer them. Um, so yeah, I wish you good luck in your endeavors of making custom DK64 music.